2 Samuel 22, uh, 21, excuse me, verse 15. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And we just had the uprising of Absalom. We just had the uprising of uh, Sheba. Now there's war. Problems after problems after problems. There's one thing the Bible says about life is expect problems. And if you ain't got them, thank the Lord you got them and prepare for problems. And David went down. Now we've got to read this section carefully. And this is one of the sec this is from 15 to 22. This is one of them problem texts, believe it or not. And Bibles mess with this text. And David went down and his servants with him. David and his soldiers. David's going out to war. He ain't going to mess up again. When there's war, he's going. <laughs> and his servants with him and fought against the Philistines. They've been a constant battle since David fought uh, Goliath. And David waxed faint. He's getting old. He's getting tired. And Ish by Benob which was of the sons of the giant. That's the first time giant shows up. Now the key word from 15 to 22 is the giant. That's one particular giant. So Ish by Bebob is a son, one of the sons, plural, of the giant. The weight of his, whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, and you can compare that to 1 Samuel 17, verse 7, Goliath. They have heavy armament because they're big and strong. He being girded with a new sword thought to have slain David. So in battle, he thinks he killed David. But David's still alive. He fainted, uh, played dead, but, now here's the thing, here's the count. But Abishai, the son of Zuriah, succored. That's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place it shows up is 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Succored means run to hell. So David is fainted on the ground, pretending to be dead, almost dead. In comes Abishai to the rescue. And smote the Philistine. These giants are Philistines. And killed him. Then the men of David swear unto him, saying, Thou shalt thou shall go no more out, thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. You're getting too old, David. You're unable to handle it. You almost died. You are the light. You are our source of light in this city, in this country. You ain't going to war no more. That came too close. And it came to pass after this. That there was again a battle with the Philistines. Another battle with the Philistines. Number two of this time. At Gob. Then Shephichiah the Hushethite slew Thap. Which was one of the sons of the giant. There's another giant. There's another son of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob. Number three with the Philistines. Where Ehalion, the son of Jerorgabin, a Bethlehemite, so he's of Bethlehem, where David was, all right, slew Goliath the Gittite. The, to what? Oh, I just, I read the modern Bibles. You see how that's in italics? That's removed from modern Bibles. Now, the italics of the King James Bible is there when they translated from the, from the language to the English, there was nothing they could put in there. And with wisdom and prayer to God and the Holy Spirit, they said, well, we're going to put this word in there. But we're going to put it in italics because we're going to be honest. That is our word. And that is like the Spanish. For us, the English, we have a toothbrush. Well, there are no words in Spanish to say toothbrush. And so when you get, you would have to put in italics for Spanish, brush of the teeth. 
That's the best way you can come to the closest of Spanish for our toothbrush. And here's the closest that they come with translating to the English. And they put it in the italics, the brother of Goliath, where modern Bibles say, Elhelhem, the son of Jerogram, a Hittite, slew Goliath. That's wrong because David slew Goliath. So their their Bible, oh, our Bibles are easy to read. Well, isn't that wouldn't that cause a kind of trouble when you read your Bible in First Samuel? David killed Goliath. Now in Second Samuel, man, this guy killed Goliath. No, it's the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. The staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Now let's go over to First Chronicles twenty verse five on this one. And somebody forgot to check the cross-reference. Of course they do. And this is not really the main problem of this passage either. You would think it was. First Chronicles 20, verse 5. And there was war again in the Philistines. And Ehiah, the son of Jer, slew Lahamai, the brother of Goliath the Gittite. So here he's named. He's not named in 2 Samuel, but in, in 1 Chronicles, that Lehemai. That's Goliath's brother, who this man slew. And let's see, I'm just going to check. Is that? Well, notice the brother of Goliath is not in italics there. You say, well, why is it italics one place? Not italics? It's how they wrote it and how we could not translate. So when you look over in... First Chronicles, that King James, well, this one we could translate to the brother. Well, we got the same guy over here, but we cannot translate. Well, we'll just take the brother from First Chronicles 28.5. The modern Bibles don't even look at the cross-reference. And I'm not going to bother to look at the, what, the, what the modern Bibles do in First Chronicles. I'm going to stick with the King James, but I'm going to tell you where the problems lie. So now, if you have a modern Bible, and I I know it's, that one's dead. Wait a minute, let me go back here for a minute. Because my cross reference is there. 20, 20 verse 5. Oh, my cross reference is there. I need it. All right. 1 Samuel 17 says David killed Goliath. Modern Bibles, okay. David killed Goliath. 2 Samuel 21, modern Bibles, Goliath is killed by another man. And then you go over to 1 Chronicles chapter 20. Well, here's another man, another giant, killed by the same man, but he's not Goliath. They mess with the Bible, and you get a messy Bible. So we'll stick with the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. And in 1 Chronicles 20, verse uh, 5, he's named. The staff of whose spear is like a weaver's beam. Now, I've never seen a weaver, and that's quite often the description. I try to look for pictures of it on the internet. I, I can't find one. But it would have to do with a weaver's machine. And I know they have some, they have like a pole, I've seen. And they will use it in the machine, and it separates the yarn or whatever the threads they're using. Verse 20, and there was yet a battle in Gath. What's number four or five? There was a man of great stature. <laughs> well, we've been talking about giants, right? Here the Bible says a great stature. This guy is a giant of giants. That had on every hand six fingers. That's the first time fingers shows up. It has to do with the guy who has six fingers. I guess he was great in mathematics. And on every foot, six toes. Whoa. Four and 24 in number. Just in case some people couldn't add that up, God put that in there. Uh, we'll add it up for him. And he also was born to the giant. So we have the giant, the giant, the giant, the giant. Four giants who are born to the giant. We'll read on. And when he defiled Israel, this big one, the six fingers on each hand, 
and six toes on each foot. When he defiled Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shema, the brother of David. So now here comes again. This would be like Joab, Abishai. This is David's cousin. See how David's family's in there? You have Joab, Abishai, and I forget the other one there. They're all of his David sister. They're all nephew? Yeah. Nephew. Family? I don't know. So they're his nephew. So David's got family in his battle. And his family causes problems. So here's his nephew, stands up and kills this giant of giants. Jonathan sued the son of Shemaiah, that's his name, the brother of David, slew him. No, that, that's David's brother, Shemaiah. That's David's brother. All right. That's one of the eight sons of Jesse. Now, here's the problem. 22. These four, these four, what we just read about, were born to the giant in Gath. That's trouble. Now let's run back to verse 19. We'll see why they changed verse 19. And there was again a battle in Gob. And the Philistines were, with the Philistines, were Ahayim, the son of Jeroboam, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Giddite. Now here's the problem. How can verse 22 say that these four giants were born to the, to the giant, the giant, where it says the brother of of the giant Goliath. That's who the, the giant is. It's Goliath. Well, he can't be the brother of Goliath if he's been born to the giant. So we'll remove that italic. And when you look at the story of Goliath, his brothers are his sons because he has incest relations with his own mother. That's what happened. So his mother produces four children, giants. They are his brother. And yet, because he had incense with his mother, listen, it happened to Corinthian church. The guy was having incense relations with his father's wife. It happened to Reuben. He had went with Jacob's wife. Goliath goes with his own mother and produces four other brothers, which are also his sons. Is that not so hard to explain that I did not have to rub out Three words in the Bible. Listen, they're Philistines. They're giants. They're just wicked and vile. And they say, I don't know, but I've always heard growing up that ancestral relations do perform children that are lacking or over on body parts. I don't know how to explain that. The huh? Deformity. Deformity. It's been it's been proven. These four that we just mentioned, 15 to 22, were born to the giant of Gath, and, he had, and one of them, and them had to be his brother. Well, there's only one way he could be a son and a brother. The same woman, who's their mother, and, well, would be his wife. And fell by the hand of David. Look, David gets the credit for his army. By the hand of his servant. So see, David got the credit, but who did it? His servant. David's known as the giant killer with his men. And there are more giants around. But people have problems with that one. There's no problem. 